Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. This is our Azure DevOps series. Uh, in last video, we installed our self-hosted agent on a Windows machine. And uh, in this video, we will be using that for our build and deployment. We'll be deploying a basic HTML uh, application on our IIS, which is hosted in my local machine. So I'll be using this default agent for building as well as deployment of that HTML web page on my uh, local machine or local system. So I have uh, I have my IIS already set up, which is you know just you just need to enable it and your IIS is up and working. I have created a, a blank uh, website there and I will be deploying my HTML web, which is uh, that I have copied. I mean it's I've cloned that uh, GitHub URL into my azure devops repo and i'll be using that for my deployment so uh, this is the agent that we had installed it's called fitness geek it's online it's uh, so it is ready to be used i have cloned uh, one of the html basic web app from github which was a public repo so i have just cloned it this is what it looks like and uh, there's a basic index.html which will get hosted in my IIS. So I made a few changes. Uh, I'll show you how I'll just make changes and I'll do the CI CD. Uh, this is my Azure Pipeline CML. This will be used for my build. Uh, there is a task for publish as well, which I will be removing that. If you look into the YAML, uh, it is configured for CI and the pool is default. The agent that we had installed in our previous video is part of the default uh, Azure uh, pipelines agent pools. Uh, we had done a few deployments previously, but uh, yes, for now we will be doing everything again. I'll just make some changes in my index.html. And once I make the changes and I commit, it should start my build process. I need to just make that change here. So our idea is to make sure our build as well as deployment is carried out by our self-hosted agent. And I'm installing this web page in my IIS, which is also hosted on my local host. And once uh, this is the IIS, I've created this website. I have a folder that is linked, which is my web app. It currently does not have anything. So once my deployment su is successful, it should have all the files and it should be routing. So currently it doesn't have any web page available. That is all right. So we'll go ahead and do our deployment. Let's head back to our Azure DevOps. Let's do a commit. Basically, this these things should not be done on master. You should have a feature branch and all. But for this purpose, I'm just showing you uh, how you should how this deployment will work. How I will configure CI CD here. Uh, for build, I'm using the YAML. Uh, uh, for the deployment, I'll use the release. You can do the same in YAML. I just wanted to break it down so you can see both YAML as well as the classic, you know, release pipeline. So that should do it. That's that will build our project. So if I hit commit on the main. It is committed now. It should trigger the build. If you see the trigger is main, that's why it did the CI, which is continuous continuous integration. So our build is in progress. If you see the pool as default, which is our self-hosted agent this agent which is running on my local machine local system this is the one it is currently running the job is completed so the build is complete that's the build i have not configured this cd that is continuous deployment 
so it has dropped the file the artifacts and I have configured my release pipeline accordingly to pick up this file and deploy it so this is the artifact that it picks you can see the details here it uses the default latest version if I show you the task it's it's a very simple basic IS website app deploy it is pointing to the website that we had created agent pool is default and let me trigger a release let's see the logs so release is in progress if we go ahead and check our agent pools the self-hosted fitness geek agent should have a job running so this is the job that is actually deploying our web app once this succeeds we should be able to use the url and the web website should appear you can see all the files are here in my folder and if i refresh this all right that works so we have successfully deployed our web app in a local machine uh, it can be a virtual machine uh, anywhere you know inside your vnet where you cannot reach via the azure uh, pipelines which are microsoft hosted so this works on anything uh, on on premises or within the vnet let's quickly make a change here just to show you how ci cd can be deployed here so i'll make some changes uh, ci is already there so for cd i'll need to just enable my release pipeline so whenever the build whenever there is a new build it should uh, a successful new build it should trigger my release pipeline i'm just making a quick change here then I'll commit. Once I commit, the build should get triggered. I'll make a change in my release pipeline. I'll just enable a CD, which is continuous deployment. So the build has triggered. If I go to releases, this is my release pipeline. I'll just do an edit. I'll do a continuous deployment. I'll just enable it and I should save this. And that's it. So once the build completes, our release should get triggered itself. If we go ahead and check the job in the agent pools, the default self hosted agent, it's currently running. Okay, it is now completed. This should now trigger our release. And that's it, it is now running. So the change that we made should get deployed in our website. Once this completes, we will refresh our website to see the changes. So the deployment is successfully completed. We should be able to see the changes. If we go here, let me just quickly refresh. You can see the changes that we made. So that's how you do build and deployment using a self-hosted agent. You can use this to deploy in any of the Azure services or any on-premises uh, servers web servers that you host yourself or you have some uh, web servers uh, in your uh, azure uh, vnet uh, be it azure vms you know so you can use this uh, these self-hosted agents for build and deployment
these are uh, one of the you know good practices when it comes to uh, securing because if you have an azure web app where you do not allow you do not want you know any of the uh, you know if you have hardened the access restrictions then you don't need to uh, whitelist or uh, you don't don't need to have the service stack for azure devops so you can you know uh, have a very secured web app any web app or, or the services that you host there and you can only whitelist one public ip which is your self-hosted agent and you can also do it via uh, uh, the private endpoints so you get, gives you a lot of uh, secure ways of deploying and building your projects so uh, that's all for today uh, thanks for watching and keep supporting